Hello, Baz again. And today I'd like to... Well, I, I really want to do something for myself. And maybe you can just watch. And that is... I made a number of improvements to BSNES Classic today. Now... There's a lot of things I want to I want to do, but today I'm going to focus on um, one of the improvements I made, which is incomplete, and so that myself or others can go back and remember how to complete this job. Now, what is the job? What it is is that I'm going to open up Beastness. What it is is this: if you go to your input preferences. Initially, there were, were a, this is where you can customize your keyboard shortcuts for various things, such as this. Or say you want to load a cartridge, you can customize that, right? But there were a number of desirable things that you couldn't create a keyboard shortcut for, let alone customize it. So um, an example of that is the tools and the debugger. These are two that I've added myself. I'm going to tell you how I did it so that if there's other um, parts of this app that you want to add stuff for, you can't. For instance, I didn't add the complete tools menu. I only added a couple the ones that I wanted. So this is why I'm making this video. Um, and it's really cool. I'm really glad because I like to be efficient and whenever I open up BeastNess, I don't have to clamor through and click shit. I can just hit, uh, you know, Apple D or whatever. Same thing with the debugger. I've got a lot for the debugger, so I can just do stuff in there. So, and this could be better, which is cool. It's cool because, you know, I like working on stuff. But I'm not trying to do that right now. I'm just trying to... Um, get a grip on teaching you right now. It's kind of difficult. So how did I add this? Well, there is a commit that I'm going to put in the video description box below um, so you can see what files need to be modified and in what way. I added some files to... You, it's pretty simple, um, especially with a roadmap like that. So I'm going to put that in the description box and I think that's all you really need. But just in case something happens to the commit, you know, I have no idea. GitHub goes down and I don't know. I'm just going to show you anyways, make the video long. So I'm going to open up the BeastNest Classic. And I'm just going to do a search for user interface. I'm pretty sure that's what it is I'm looking for. So we're looking for this. Let's go to UI QT input, right? This is it. Here we go. All right. So something that wasn't present that I added was the ability to specify um, a window that you want the keyboard shortcut to work only on. For instance, um, in the debugger, there's going to be shortcuts you want to only occur when you have the debugger window when it has focus. So I, that wasn't present. I added that. I just wanted to tell you that I added it. I'm not going to actually show you how. It's it's in the hotkey input. Um, that's weird. It's not here. What the heck? Wait, something's up. I'm in the wrong... What's going on here? Uh, I'm in the wrong branch. Alright, let's go to the master branch. And now that we're in the master branch... Sorry for that confusion. Now that we're in the master branch... Yeah, 
Okay, here's my stuff I added. It's, it's an associated window enumeration right now. There's just the main window and the debugger window. So if there was another window that you wanted, um, you could just add a, a title for it in the enumeration here. And later I'm gonna show you how you can actually reference that enumeration and how it you'll get it to lead to a window. Okay? All right, cool. First of all, I just, this bothers me. Okay. Once again, I'm, I'm, no, what's going on here? All right, well, let's just, I'm just, I feel a little confused in the moment, but I'm just gonna ignore that for now and keep talking. Where the heck is it? I don't know. I'm looking for the thing that actually includes the, these user interface files. So I'm gonna do another search. How come I didn't see it? Oh, it's up here. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna end up, usually, I mean, you could put it in one of these pre-existing files, but in my case, I made a tools for the tools section and the debugger section, make new files, these user interface files, and you'll include them here in the input.cpp. Once again, UIQT input. Okay, so what is this file? It's really cool because it's all kind of automatic, but we need to show you the gist of what this file is, what it does. So I'm gonna go into one of the ones that I made, like this debugger one. You just follow this, this pattern where you make an input group, call it user interface, what, whatever you want yours to be. Um, real quick, I wanna tell you that um, I couldn't figure out how to it's how to do nested things. I want to show you what I'm talking about. If I wanted to put this debugger whole thing inside of tools, so it showed up in here, and then it would be like a sub sub section, I couldn't really grasp how to do that, and so I just accepted it. I actually almost got it, and I didn't even like how it looked anyways. But just warning you, you would have to kind of go into uncharted territory for that. But getting back to teaching you this, yep, you, you make input group, blah, 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 and then whatever input category you want your thing to be in, and there's only three, there's controller port one, port two, and user interface. These are part of an enumeration input category up here. May, you could potentially add a new one. I don't have fun with that. It's a little bit of uncharted territory there, but it's cool. That's what we're all about. So, um, this is the text that you want it to be shown as. You, you make a namespace, same thing, capital there. You know, it's just a thing. And then um, in here, whatever you want um, your item to be called, make a struct. Just copy this pretty much, and then the whole gist is that inside of this, you can have a function that that does stuff when when the thing is pressed, when the button when the button is pressed or the the key shortcut, and when it's released. You can do one or the other or both. The function is pressed or it's released. Um, I only use pressed. That's all I really care about. Um, and then you have this constructor, which you know is the same title as this guy. It, it does that, and then. Um, this is what you want it to be called in the menu. This is what you want it to be called in the configuration file. And then this is the associated window, which is a default parameter of the main window. So you can leave it blank if you're just gonna have it be for the main window. Um, and this is where, um, if, you're, if you're ever gonna add different types of windows, enumerations well this is at least where you would associate it with your actual item um, you give it a default value 
here none would apply for none for like no default otherwise you can do stuff like this um, I'm not sure you can just do a little search in the source code for exactly what you can use for these the, you know of course there's something somewhere um, yeah and then you just you know declare the the structure I usually just do the lowercase of the uppercase one here you never actually have to do anything once you've declared it like this in this fashion it's all automatic it'll automatically um, do the configuration files stuff for you it'll automatically create the entry in the GUI I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything else and you can reference the commit too don't forget and then I just did that for all of them and just with the little different nuances um, this this is pretty standard um, so it's just like um, I just followed the hierarchy of the other things and then I just added my own little subcategory debugger I, I would encourage that you stay within the the flow of that the the standard of that uh, and that's pretty much it guys and then I just did that for tools as well and oh there's one other thing in user interface.hpp make sure you add an extern declaration of the input group for instance I've got these two and and just in case I'm going to look at the commit with you in my browser I don't mind and that'll really tell us what am I doing right now what are we going over uh, this one so this is it the add more user configurable shortcut keys um, this is completely unrelated but I just happened to go in with this commit so sorry about that just, I get really impatient like when I see things that I need to fix I don't want to like have to go through all the trouble of reorchestrating it into a more appropriate commit I just I don't do that all the time but it happens anyways um, and this is kind of unrelated as well because I originally added hard-coded shortcuts only to later discover that I could add user configurable ones so BAM I took all those out what the uh, this is another is this a double commit like seriously this whatever this is this is like a double commit yeah ignore that stuff more of the getting rid of the shortcuts I added here's where we add the include we're in the input.cpp file oh okay here's one of the things I didn't tell you about is this is the functionality I added so that we can have an associated window with the keyboard shortcuts so um, right here I just I check if um, we use the the main window enumeration if so we're gonna have this window pointer um, point to the main window otherwise we'll point it to the debugger window and then if you added some code you would want to add another uh, else if statement or maybe turn this into a switch at that point and um, yeah then you can add a new a new window there and then you have this just make sure that the window exists and if it's and that's active and that's how we retain the shortcut to um, a window now if you want system-wide shortcuts there's no support for that right now you would have to remodify the code and the numeration for that and then you would have that or I would have to do that so all right remember there's a main window default parameter there so you don't have to declare that that was just to make it easy to integrate with the current system yep 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 told you about all that 
Oh, 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 oh. The, the is active. Um, this is just a function to check if the window's active, but this was a, a main window function of the main window class, but I really needed that to be in the window class so that I could check if any window is active, not just the main window. So that's what that does. And earlier above, you saw that I had removed it from um, the main thing there, the main window class. With all that, it all works. I know that there are, if you rewatch this video or if you retain those key points about how to do certain things, that's cool. And, um, yeah. Sorry I couldn't have condensed that more for you. But that's the way it goes, people. All right, I'm Baz signing off. Have a good one.